Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. This is AW Exotica with yet another video for you guys. This time I thought of making a video for uh, camera basic beginners, people who are uh, learning photography, who have just started uh, their journey towards photography. So in this three video series, I'm going to talk about the photography triangle, which basically includes three aspects. Uh, one is the aperture, the other is shutter speed, and uh, the last one is ISO. So in this video, we're going to talk about the aperture, what the aperture is, uh, what the aperture does, how it functions, and how it affects the image uh, that you finally get out of the camera. Stay tuned in. This video is going to be really, really amazing for new beginners who have started their journey. If you are new to the channel, do subscribe. Please leave a like and also turn on the notifications so that you guys don't miss out on the good stuff. So let's get into the video. Now guys, this brings us to a first question, what aperture actually is. Aperture is one of the three pillars of photography and it is perhaps one of the most important, uh, the most important pillar in photography. Uh, aperture can be defined as opening inside the lens through which light can pass and hit your sensor. You can compare the camera's aperture with the pupil of your eyes. Once you move uh, into a dark area, the iris of the pupil expands to let in more light. Once you move to a brighter area, the iris of the pupil compresses to let in less light. Now, the aperture of a lens controls basically two things. One is the exposure of the image itself and the other is the depth of field, which we are going to talk about in the later half of the video. Now, this brings us to another question. How the aperture affects the exposure of an image? First, we're going to talk about the exposure itself. As the aperture expands and compresses its size, it allows you to manipulate the light that is entering and hitting the sensor. A larger aperture means a brighter image because it is allowing a lot of light to enter into inside the camera. Whereas a smaller aperture would allow less amount of light to hit that same sensor, the sensor of your camera. So a larger aperture means brighter images, a smaller aperture means darker images. Now comes the point of using the aperture, when to use a larger aperture, when to use a smaller aperture. Just use common sense. A larger aperture is supposed to be used in low light environment, like when you're shooting at night, like when you're indoors. Uh, whereas a smaller aperture uh, will be used when you're shooting in bright daylight or sunlight, or perhaps taking photos of uh, the landscape uh, in daylight, broad daylight. The camera sensor doesn't require that much light. So in darker situations, you ought to have a large aperture and in brighter situations where there is a lot of ambient light, there is good sunlight, you ought to use a smaller aperture. Now coming over to another question, how the aperture affects depth of field? Now first we're going to talk about what depth of field actually is. Depth of field is the amount of your photograph that appears sharp from front to back. Now there are two types of depths of field. There are shallow depth of fields and there is a deep depth of field. Now, aperture affects both of them. If you're using a larger aperture, which is letting in a lot of light, that means your image is going to have a shallower depth of field. The subject perfectly in focus and the background is going to give you, give you that beautiful bokeh effect. Vice versa, if you're using a smaller aperture, you're going to have a deep depth of field with almost all of the image in focus, like when you're taking photos of landscape or making videos of landscape, but you want all of the image or all of the frame perfectly in focus, you use a smaller aperture. Coming over to the most confusing part of the aperture, now on your camera, the aperture is basically determined by the f-stop number. The game between the f-stop number and aperture is, the smaller the f-stop number, the larger the aperture is going to be, and vice versa. If the f-stop number is larger, let's say f11 or f12, the aperture is going to be smaller. So if you want that nice bokeh effect, blur effect in your backgrounds, or you're shooting for portraits, use a smaller f-stop number because that is going to open the aperture of your camera really wide. Uh, if, you, if you're shooting landscape, if you're shooting uh, <coughs> group photographs if in, in which you want everything in focus, if you're shooting at a beach perhaps, uh, where you want 
all of the frame in focus, you ought to have the f-stop number at the largest value, which can be anything beyond f9, f8 or f9, f11, f12, f13, 14, 15, any number of that sort. That's going to get the whole picture in focus. Uh, for you guys to do away with the confusion of the f-stop number that in the aperture, just remember one basic rule. The smaller the f-stop number, the larger the aperture is going to be. And there is going to be more background blur. Larger the f-stop number, the smaller the aperture is going to be. So everything else and everything in the frame is going to be in focus and sharp. Now here are a few takeaways for you guys. Whenever you're shooting portraits, use a smaller f-stop number. That means a larger aperture. Uh, whenever you're shooting landscape, use a larger f-stop number. That means going to let in less light and all of the frame is, in going to be, is going to be in focus. Another tip is, if you're shooting indoors, use a larger aperture. That means a smaller f-stop number. f1.4, f1.8, f2.8, any number. If you're shooting outdoors, in bright sunlight, you're recommended to use larger f-stop number, a greater f-stop number. So that is going to reduce the aperture. Well, the aperture is going to get small, letting in less light and giving you more focus you know, on the rest of your frame. Well, that's pretty much it for today's video. Hope you liked this video. I'm going to come up with a lot of videos like this, camera tutorials, filmmaking, vlogs, uh, traveling. There's going to be a lot on this channel. So hope you like this video. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like, turn on notifications so you don't miss on any of the juicy stuff. This is AW Pixotica signing off. I'll see you in another video soon. Bye-bye.